Hello my awesome punks and welcome. My name is Heroin Bob and today I'm going to say some shit about my tattoo. About my cat paw tattoo. This is a pair of cat paws. The cat paws. I'm like trying to be like be as demure about this as possible. Um, whenever I stream or even whenever whenever I am wearing a low cut top to where you can see my decolletage chesticles, cleavage, whatever you want to call it, I always get asked, what's that on your chest? Because normally like it's up a little bit higher, so all you see are just like, hey. <laughs> if I'm streaming, I typically deflect uh, the question and I'm like, they're, they're cat paws. Um, I don't really want to talk about it right now. And the reason for that is because I have a really hard time talking about this tattoo without getting very, very upset. Uh, I'm going to try very hard to do so right now and I'm probably going to fail <laughs> because this is probably the most personal tattoo that I have. Now, I can't talk about this tattoo without talking about the cat, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a story about this, my, this fur baby. When I was living uh, with my best friend, who has been in my Tough Mudder video, uh, we lived in a condo together and he, he kept making comments about like we should get a pet but I did kind of I, I like the idea of a pet so I went to without him <laughs> I kind of just was like oh like, I guess he wants a pet so let, I'm gonna go get a pet and so I went to the shelter um, at my hometown in Gloucester and I, I was looking at both dogs and cats but they didn't really have any like dogs that stuck out to me so since none of the dogs piqued my interest, uh, I went to the cat area, and the cat area they had some in the little kennels, and then they had some just roaming about. I went in there and I saw a cat, uh, a female cat, in the in one of the little kennels, and I was I was interested in her because I thought she was beautiful, and I I wanted to have a cat that I could hold. <laughs> Like, I'm, that is like the, the big test for me. I need an animal that I can like do snuggling with and like hold and just be cool with. Um, and if I was gonna get a cat, I also wanted to make sure I they were cool with me touching their paws because I do soft paws. Um, the little tips that make it so they can't scratch. Uh, I used to do that for my cats. I don't really do it anymore for Moxie, but that's a story for another day. So I wanted to hold her and see if she was okay with being held. And so I asked the lady for help and for someone to like help me. Unfortunately, the person that was actually in the room with me was a volunteer and she wanted to make sure it was okay to get, to, to take the animal out. She wasn't allowed to take the animal out herself. I don't know why. So she went to go get somebody else. Um, and I'm sitting there in the room. And like, the, like I said, there were cats roaming around on the floor and this cat was just chilling on this table behind me and it was a gray and white tabby cat and he's just chilling there just like all hunched over like cats do and this other orange cat came up and just started attacking the shit out of him like just like like clawing and scratching at him and this the, the, the gray and white tabby cat was just chilling he just waited for it to finish having its fit and then like just stayed sitting there. Just, I was super, super impressed. And then the lady came to go help me with the cat that I had originally wanted. And I was like, is there something wrong with that gray and white cat? I mean, and she's like, no, why? And I was like, cause this other cat just came up because the other cat was like on the other side of the room by then. It's like came up and attacked the hell out of him. And like, he just sat there. And she's like, no, that's just the kind of cat he is. He's like, this is Gunther. He's just, he's just sweet. I mean, if she's like, if I could adopt him, I would, but I already have six cats. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I don't think you really need another cat. And I was like, okay. So I was like, I started petting him and he just seemed super cool. He let me pick him up. And I was like, is he okay? <laughs> he's kind of flaky. And she's like, no, he just has a skin condition. I'm sure if you gave him like regular baths, he'd be fine. And he was like cool with me holding him and I just saw like some other cat like go nutso on him and he just was too super chill and I was like you know what I want this guy so uh, I took Gunther home and the shelter said he was probably like a year old 
Uh, when I got him, I'm really upset that I don't have pictures of like when I got him. Um, but they had like just neutered him because they he was like a stray cat, completely feral stray cat that they found outside who was like this ridiculously chill. Um, they had just neutered him, so he still had like those big like puffy tomcat cheeks. Oh my god, he was so cute. Just a fat head and like a little skinny body because of course like most shelter cats are skinnier. To just, I have a tendency when I get a cat from the shelter, they're like nine pounds, and then like after they've been with me a while, they're like twelve pounds. They don't really get above twelve pounds, but I'm, they're 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 bigger. <laughs> they gain a quarter of their body weight. She's not fat. Moxie's not fat, and Gunther wasn't fat. But anyway, the the name he came with from the shelter was Gunther, and my best friend is half German, um, so Gunther. Uh, so he thought that was perfect, and I thought it was a perfect name. Um, he did take a little bit to get used to us, and he was just an amazing cat. Um, I had him, and this is why I start getting emotional, um, and the four and a half years that I had him, sorry, uh, we moved 12 times, so he moved with me a lot. Uh, we went through in that four and a half years, uh, three relationships, and, like, he just, he wasn't a normal cat. Like, he was really smart. Uh, he was leash trained. Like, he would walk on a leash. Um, he would come when you call him. Like, most people, cats don't do that. Like, he would come when you call him. Like, he was at the door every day waiting for me to come home every day and he like followed me everywhere he wouldn't let me pee by myself like he was pretty much like a dog without the high maintenance of a dog like I didn't have to walk him of course like he didn't like being in boxes like I could never put him in a carrier and when every time we moved he had to be like out in the moving van or out in my car because if I probably put him in his character the first carrier the first thing he would do is shit <laughs> And like it didn't matter like even if I took him out and cleaned out the carrier and tried to put him back in he, just, he would just shit he just did not like carriers <laughs> I think maybe he was claustrophobic I don't know he also had this thing where like I trained him so if I did this he would come lay up on my chest like he did hand signals I'd be like go Gunther go and he would go wherever I would point him and I'd be like Gunther up and or like just I would just have to do this and he would come lay right here and this is where his front paws would be which is why I'm segueing to this but the reason why I'm getting so emotional is because again when I I, I got him from the shelter he, they said he was a year he was only a year old so you know I'm expecting to have him for a long time <sighs> because after four and a half years I didn't have him anymore uh, it was in 2012, I think. Yeah. Uh, it was 2012, and um, it was like around my birthday, around June. Um, he was just like getting skinnier. Like, he was getting a lot skinnier, and I couldn't understand why. You know, like, he wasn't eating. So, like, I took him to the vet. Um, and he also, like, was starting to lose some hair, like, on his back legs. So I thought, like, I don't know, maybe, like, his skin condition was getting worse. Because, like, I gave him baths every, every, like, week or two weeks to, like, keep him, like, fluffy and, like, not flaky anymore. And, like, he wasn't, like, he wasn't as go-lucky as he normally was. And, uh, so I took him to the vet. And, like, they did pled work for him. I'm sorry. They did blood work for him, and it came out like his kidneys were failing. He had full renal failure. And they're like, you know, it's really, really bad. But, I mean, you can try to give him this special food. Um, it's really expensive. And you can give him, um... IV fluid treatments like every day 
And with cats, when you give them an IV bag, um, you don't like stick it in a vein or anything you actually just like pull up the extra loose skin and like stick it in there and just like did they end up with this big fluid bubble well like give him fluid every day and like maybe it'll help but I mean he's not gonna live that much longer so like I did that I did the special food and the the fluid every day for like two months and then in August August 28th um, 2012 um, he uh, he started bleeding out of his mouth And so I call my best friend and I'm like, I'm sorry. So I call my best friend and told him, I was like, he's, he's really bad. Like when I, those two months when I was doing the special food and the, the fluid, like he wouldn't eat unless I was sitting on the floor next to him. I'm sorry. Uh, he was getting really bad. So I called my best friend and I was like, um, Gunther is, Gunther is not doing very well. I've tried everything I can. Um, I think you need to come say goodbye to him. Because again, he was bleeding out of his mouth. So normally at that point, like he's bleeding through his skin. That usually just means that it's time to go. I'm sorry this is not a happy video. Like, this is why I don't talk about it when someone asks. I'm sorry. So, when, uh, so D David came and said goodbye. Uh, and then on August 29th, I had, I had to have him euthanized. Because he just, it was just, at that point, I think, just really selfish of me to keep him going because again like he was so skinny he was like eight pounds at that point and like the fluid like after the fluid he would perk back up so I was like I just felt it was like really selfish um to try to keep him alive just because I didn't want to let him go. So I took him to the vet and I had him euthanized. And I also, like, it's the first time I've ever seen anybody die. Like, I have this thing where there's, like, before him, yes, like, I have grandparents that have passed, but I've just not gone to the funeral. It's just like, I don't want to see that. Like, I have a hard time being in, in hospitals, despite the fact that I'm in them all the time. Um, and in nursing homes, I have a really hard time with that. Because I don't, I don't handle death very well. Um, and when, when it, they give them like a sedative, I'm sorry, this is probably gonna be really upsetting for anybody who's ever put like, a, had to have a pet euthanized. Um, it's just like, uh, like I watched the life go out of him. And it was like literally as soon as they stuck the needle in him, he was gone. It was just like he was there and then he was... <laughs> I'm sorry, I ugly cry. There's no, there's no pretty cry with me. That's also why I don't talk about it. This was my fur baby. And this was my fur baby. This is the first pet that I ever had that was mine. He went with me through like 
three relationships and he moved me like 12 different places like it was just me and Gunther like out of all the places I moved it was like I have two things like I could probably like not have any of the other stuff but you have to accept my bookcases and my cat <laughs> and yeah it would have been like I probably wouldn't have to move 12 places if I didn't have an animal but no I promised to keep him forever <laughs> And I did. Um, so my dad was really great and uh, made him his own box. But he wasn't like it. We didn't put him in a shoe box and buried him. My dad made a really nice cedar box for him and stained it. And um, we, we buried him next to our family dog on my parents my parents house so he's like he's always at my parents house and whenever I go over to my parents house I always like stand on the spot that he's buried so my mom, dad made him a really nice box and uh, before we put him in the box forever and buried him I took ink and I took his paws and I stamped um, a, a piece of paper so I could do this. These are his paw prints. These are his, his front paw prints. And the tattoo artist made a copy and put them here. And this tattoo was probably the fastest and easiest tattoo I've ever had. It took 20 minutes there was like no pain it was just done he did a really good job and it's 138 tattoo in Gloucester if you're ever in Virginia like I said like I have, I have a really hard time dealing with it because again like that was my fur baby and as a hot mess as I am now you understand why I don't talk about it um but this is for Gunther. These, these are Gunther's paws. And on August 29th, I get really sad. Whenever I really sit and think about Gunther, I get like this. I loved him very, very much. I still love him. I miss him. But anyway, guys, that's... This is a really sad video <laughs> about my tattoo of my palm prints on my chest. So now you know, and uh, thanks for watching.